how do you find the square root of 81? The square root of 81. So what we can do here is we can, uh, we just basically, again, two ways of thinking about this problem. You can use either prime factorization or you can use um, kind of a trial and error in this case here. And the only reason why we can use trial and error here is because um, we know that 81 here is a perfect square and we know that through trial and error. So let me walk, the, walk you through this problem using trial and error first and then I'll do um, another method that involves uh, taking the prime factors of 81 here. So trial and error basically we what we want to know is um, if we want to know the square root of 81, so this here is uh, we can write this mathematically using the square root, using the square root term and putting 81 inside the square root term. So this here is square root of 81. And what we can do here, we can, um, we know that the inverse of the square root is equal to simply the exponent squared, right? So what we can do here is we can actually write out our exponents, right? We can use trial and error and we can see which exponents um, would equal um, this term here. So I start let's start off with one squared. So I know that one squared here is equal to one times one, which is one. Two squared is two times two, which is equal to four, or two squared is equal to four. Three squared is three times three, which equals nine. Four squared is 16, four times four is 16. Five squared is five times five, which is 25. Six squared is six times six, which equals 36. Now, move on to the side. 7 squared here is 49 because 7 times 7 is 49. 8 squared here is, and we're looking for 81 here, right? 8 squared here is 8 times 8, 8 which is 64. And 9 squared here is 9 times 9, which equals 81. So this here is our magic number here, 81, right? So if we know 9 squared is equal to 81, what we can do is if I want to uh, square root both sides, I can get rid of this exponent, right? So I can take the square root of this side and the square root of this side. So these guys cancel out. So the square root and the, and the square uh, and the exponent here cancels out, which means nine would equal the square root of 81. So this here would be our solution. 81 would, the square root of 81 would equal nine based off trial and error. So this here it could be our solution due to trial and error. But what we can do is if we did not know that this here was a perfect square and sometimes it's not a perfect square, and it's not as nice to us, what we can do here is we can uh, use prime factorization to solve for this problem here. Let me scroll down and say that if we had, again, the square root of 81 as our problem here, what we can do is we can actually take the factors of 81 to see if we can solve uh, for this solution here. And what we could, we, we usually do this uh, when we don't have a perfect square. Um, because it helps us write our radicals in a simplified radical term where we have a constant and we have some type of radical. So what we can do here is we can look at 81 and we can break eight, root 81 down into its prime factors. So this is going to equal, we have to think of numbers that are divisible by um, um, into 81. What goes into 81 here? And upon first kind of inspection here, we can say that we can safely say that two is not divisible um, into 81 or it's not a factor of 81 because um, it's not an even number. So we would not, we would move on from two to three and we could say is three divisible is three um, a factor of 81? Well, in this case, yes, it is a factor of 81 because what we can, um, a cheat to, or a quick way to know um, factors of, um, if, if something can go um, is divisible by three, is simply adding up the digits inside the um, the number here and seeing if that in itself is divisible by three. So eight plus one here is nine, and nine here is divisible by three because three times three is nine. So therefore, we can say that um, three here is a factor of eighty-one. So let's pull out a three here or a root three here, and we're going to divide eighty-one by three here. So let me do some side work here. So E1 divided by 3. So we're going to have 27 as our remainder, right? So, or sorry, as a quotient here. So it's 3 times 27 is going to equal 81 here. And what we can do here is we can actually repeat this step, right? Well, we can break 27 down into more components, right? So we can say that 81 would equal, or I'm just going to actually write the equal sign root three times, and 27 here, I know that this is divisible by three because three times nine 
is 27, right? So I can pull out another three here. And then this would be three times nine is equal to 27, right? And now this problem is very, very easy. You should be able to see that root nine here is simply just three. Um, so what we can do here is we can say that root three times root three times the square root of nine is simply just three, right? Because I know that three times three is equal to nine. So I can say this is multiplied by three. And finally, I can combine these guys here, right? Root three times root three is going to equal also equal root nine because I'm simply uh, multiplying the whatever is in the square root times three. And the root nine is obviously, like we said before, we know that root, uh, root nine here equals three, right? So we can say this, this is simply just three times three, which is going to equal nine, which means the square root of 81 is going to equal nine in this solution here. So either way, both of these um, guys will give us our, uh, the answer for this problem. Uh, one is obviously quicker because it's trial and error. Uh, one takes a little bit longer, but it really depends if you're very familiar with your perfect squares or not. So the solution here is correct because we have uh, square root of 81 is nine. But if we want to be a little bit more formal here, we can say that the square root of 81 here is actually plus or minus nine. Because again, nine times nine here is going to equal 81, but also negative nine times negative nine will also equal 81 here. So you have to also, um, if, uh, if we're looking at, uh, from this problem from a, um, from a quadratic kind of point of view here, um, both answers are suitable. So plus or minus nine are suitable answers for this problem. So this solution here is correct. We have nine here, so it's plus or minus nine, which is the correct solution.